and three. Okay, I'll admit, that is super cool. Hey everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and my friends over at GearBest sent me this Anycubic Cossel Delta 3D Printer, and it comes as a kit that you have to assemble. Now, personally, I've kind of avoided Delta 3D printers. I didn't see the point. If I get a 3D printer, the purpose of it, in my opinion, is to increase my capability to make. And I didn't see how a Delta 3D printer would do that. I mean, it was a cool idea, but how would it improve my ability to make things? But now that I have put this kit together, I'm really starting to see the possibilities in this. Now, like I said, this comes in a kit and you can see here, the reason why I'm cutting off the top of my head is so that you can see the big pile of extra parts that are left over after this print, which is fine. I like extra parts. Um, I'm really impressed by the economy of this kit. That is to say, there's not a lot of parts to it. Compare it to building the ANA A8, and I had this together in half the time, less than half the time, up and running and ready to go. This printer sells on GearBest for $189, and with the coupon code that you will find in the description down here and the affiliate link that will give me a little kickback if you really want to have this printer, uh, we, I can get it for you for uh, under $170. So it's a very, it's not just, uh, like I said, economy in terms of the parts that it has, but it's a very cheap 3D printer. But for that price, you've got to expect that you're going to spend a little bit more of your time and effort getting it up and running. And that's certainly true in this case. Uh, it's certainly true for the experience that I had. Now, again, comparing it to the ANET A8, this is slightly cheaper and has a slightly smaller build area, but a much taller build area than most 3D printers. However, this as a as a printer feels less together for me. And that's that's a bit of the downside that we'll get to in a little bit. I did record the first hour of the process of me building this, but I didn't get a chance to I was trying to stream it on Twitch, but shoddy internet meant that that didn't work. So sorry about that. But the process of building this was a really interesting one. For one, the build plate just sits right on top of the electronics. And the, the well, they're still marked X, Y, and Z on the board, but really they're Z, Z, and Z motors. But the three motors that are, are running here, um, the the instructions said to put their cables going up and this build plate kind of sits on those cables and pushes them down and i'm not entirely comfortable with that had i known i would have rotated them 90 degrees and had the cables coming out the side unfortunately though i'm not going to be moving these cables because the screws for getting at these are some of the worst screws for getting at i i have just have no idea how i'm going to unscrew those and then re-screw. I'm not going to do it. Just not going to do it. I also discovered after I, I put it all together and got the electronics all together, which was fairly simple, but remember, coordinate your, your end stops with the, with the motors that they come out of, because, uh, when I was done putting this together, it was treating this side over here, uh, that direction as the face. And I had set up the face over here so okay no problem i'll just rotate the motor cables so that now instead of this being the face this is now the face but because they're x y and z but they're not x y and z i didn't think about rotating the st the uh end stops which are up at the top which is i think unusual most of these 3d printers do work by dead reckoning they get one point and then they move to it but it seems odd to me to have the end stops at the top but then again where would they go at the bottom because it we'll talk about the motion in just a little bit regardless i didn't rotate those end stop cables and it caused a problem of course it went up and it said oh well this one has touched when it was that one that touched so but but that one hasn't stopped so let's keep moving it up and it this one had already stopped so i was going and skipping steps so that was a bit of a headache and i had to re-rotate those 
I also uh, ran into a problem. Let's maybe rotate this so that the uh, the logo is facing the right way. Branding is important. <laughs> um, so one thing that I found was interesting was you you set up. They recommend Pronter Face. I use the the control uh, for. Uh, uh, in Simplify 3D, the machine control. But even if you tell it that you're using a Delta 3D printer, the controls still come up with X, Y, and Z. I expected it to be Z, Z, and Z. And so because it's saying X, Y, and Z, what I expected was that if I said to move 10, you know, 10, uh, uh, what is this, millimeters or whatever, uh, down in the Z, that it would just move one of these 10 millimeters down, and then if it said 10 into X and 10 into Y, and this kind of crossways up and down thing would be confusing. But watch what happens when I tell it to move 10 down in the Z. Well, let's do it again. Let's do 100. There we go. They all move. Between the control here and the movement here, the firmware is automatically translating that idea of moving down in the Z to moving all of the motors together. That's super cool. So if I move in the X, watch which motors move. See, these two kind of moved if I move in the X. I'll go the other direction. Oops, let's move 10. And if I move into Y, all three kind of move a little bit in order to move it in the Y. So that's super cool. You don't have to worry about, oh, how can I move them? Let me disable the motors and show you. Any movement in the direction moves all of these motors around. And, and I really kind of dig that, but it does make me uh, uh, question some things. See, with a traditional Cartesian 3D printer, the, the Z step is controlled by a screw and people have figured out, okay, the screw width is this and the motor, the stepper motor can do a minimum turn of this. Therefore, the minimum Z height that you can have is this and we make it some multiple of that and we'll have perfectly smooth Z heights. And quite frankly, I think some people go a little bit nuts with this, but what's what's the recommended Z height here? When, when your Z height is a movement of all of these and they're all moving on a belt, which also I think is interesting. Take, take a Cartesian bot and have it move up and down in Z. You'll notice that's the slowest motion ever. But in this case, moving this up and down in the Z is really kind of fast. And it has to be because any motion on any one of these requires the movement of all of these motors. So, so it, move, it has to move a little bit faster than, than in other... Uh, 3D printers. So that's super cool. So I got it up and running and I printed this Simon uh, uh, mini pawn for a project that I'm working on and it um, it didn't come out very well. First of all there was some massive stringing and you can you can watch the uh, 3D print of that, the time lapse of that in the uh, uh, intro for this. I'll probably edit it up, up here so that you guys can see that as well. But uh, it didn't come out very well. Not only was it super stringy, and I know how to fix stringy, just turn up retraction, but listen to this. The layers did not stick together very well. It kind of crackles and, ooh, I just ripped the leg off. Okay, it, it's kind of badly adhered. So I turned up the retraction. Uh, I turned up the extrusion multiplier just a little bit and uh, Oh, and I found that one of these screws were super loose, and that's probably what caused these vertical walls to just look like garbage. So I tightened up the screws, uh, tightened up the belts a little bit, and then printed another one. And this one also came out. It looks a little bit better, but the back, the back corners look terrible. And then there's a part where it gets so thin, and I'll have a picture of that up here, but it gets so thin that you can see through it. The, the extruder was just not moving the plastic properly. Now, I'm not sure how to fix the extruder. Uh, I think what I did next was I printed a new fan for this. Now, I have to mention that because my Cossel was having problems, I printed this on my replicator. And of course I used a high temp plastic because it is sitting right next to the nozzle. In this case, I used PET, but could have used ASA for this. Um, and, and I printed a fan for this. So I think that this is interesting because this printer needs a lot of work right off the bat. You need, it, it, it can't be your first 3D printer. 
at least in my experience, it did not produce good enough prints that it can produce its own parts yet. So that's kind of sad, but it still was a, an amazing project. Let me just preface that. So I printed the fan for this and just changing that fan and clearing the path for the filament so that it didn't have to pull it as much. I printed one last tiny pawn at, at size and it came out, first of all, solid. So I think that the fan fixed that. Those corners that weren't looking so good are looking much better on it. So again, I think that, that was a fan. Oops, sorry, Simon. And uh, and it, overall, it was a much, much better print. Tightening up the bolt, uh, getting a better fan on it, and then clearing the path so that the filament can roll out easily fixed all of my problems so far. So uh, next thing I need to do is really get the level of this build plate down. And I want to talk a little bit about leveling the build plate. In order to level the build plate, the first thing you do is you, you take the printer and you home it up to the top, and then you use your jogging controls to bring it down and down and down and down. And you find where the nozzle barely, you know, you get that piece of paper in there and you find where the nozzle barely touches the build plate. That number then, the, that height that you find, you have to then enter into the code for the firmware, recompile the code and re-upload that firmware to your 3D printer. Now that to me seems a bit extreme. That should be a setting that you set through the menu or, or some code that you send to it to say, set this in your memory, but no, it is in fact a part of the code that you have to recompile. Now, despite the fact that I have years of software development experience, I've never played with firmwares. I know, shocking, but I never have. And this was the first time that I had to load up the Arduino software and upload information and send it to there and, and edit the code. And now that I've done that, this is maybe for me, the biggest takeaway from this. I'm not afraid of doing that anymore. And I don't know why I was afraid to begin with. It was just something new that I never had to do before with any of my other 3d printers. But now no, I've done it. And that's good because so far in order to load filament, you have to heat up the nozzle, of course, then feed it through and do all that. There's no script for, for loading it. But when you heat up the nozzle through the menu, it immediately uh, fails out. And I think it fails out because in my ANET A8, I've noticed that when I heat up the nozzle, it also tries to heat up the build plate. But this, this is not a heated build plate. This is just a piece of glass. So... It fails because it doesn't have a build plate to heat. Now I am going to get the heated build plate upgrade for this and go with that, but that's a bug in the firmware. And so far, the only way I've been able to do it is to go in through the con the control panel, the, the machine interface and tell it to heat up the nozzle, which means that I'm going to have to have a computer constantly hooked up to this thing if I want to use it for any long-term capacity. So add to the price of this, at least the new one, either a, a heated build plate upgrade or, you know, a computer to hook up to it or a Raspberry Pi or an element or whatever additional controls you want for this, because you're going to need it in order to use this, this 3D printer effectively. And that's a little bit frustrating. So there we go, a fully functional Delta 3D printer that is cheap doesn't require a lot of parts. It's super, I, I forgot to mention, it's super rugged. I pick this thing up and carry it with me everywhere I go and it doesn't throw it off calibration. It's strong and I really, really like that. But it does require a lot of hands-on work and a lot of hands-on work with the firmware just to level the build plate. And that's unusual, but it forces you into that learning experience. If you want a 3D printer that is one, super cool, but two, that allows you to, that, that will make you learn something in the process of getting this 3D printer, then I can't recommend this printer enough. If you got the ANET A8 thinking, yes, I'm going to learn 3D printing, you spent more money and didn't learn as much as this Cossel taught me at least. And so from a learning perspective, this is a great printer, but 
it's not a great first printer. And if you're getting this just because, well, I can't afford much of a 3D printer and this is cheap, you're gonna be disappointed because I had to print a part that I couldn't print on it before it could print its own parts. And so this isn't a great first 3D printer. If you want a great first 3D printer and, and you don't have a lot to spend, I still recommend the Monoprice Select Mini, which I point to, but it's no longer back here. I've moved it out to the shed. Um, that is a great printer for people who just want to be able to make prints. But if you want to learn something, and if, if you've maybe already got the Mini or another 3D printer, and you're like, you know, I, I, I'm done with doing this hands-on thing. I want to get it into the nitty and gritty. I cannot think of a cheaper and more effective way to do that than this Cossel. That sounds a little bit like I'm saying this thing's greatest strength is that it's weak. And that's not true at all, because once I get this thing up and running, I'm going to be taking this 3D printer with me. This 3D printer to fairs and demonstrations because this printer one it's very strong and it's very rigid despite the fact that it's got very few parts it's not coming apart on me and so I can put it in demonstration situations and it'll hold together and two it's just a little bit cooler to watch print than other 3D printers so I'm going to be taking this printer with me to those demonstrations so that people can see 3D printing in action with just a really cool action doing it. Uh, so this to me is a very valuable 3D printer. And again, if you want this 3D printer and you wanna support what I do, there's an affiliate link in the description. I'm not going to tell you to go out and run and get this right now. If it's not for you, it's not for you. That's fine. This doesn't have to be for everybody, but for the people who it's for. I, I loved the experience of putting this together. It was a growing experience for me. It was a learning experience. And that was just invaluable. Absolutely wonderful. So there you go. The Anycubic Cossel Delta 3D printer. It's got a big build volume, not the biggest, but it's got a very tall build volume and it's just cool and a great learning experience as i said before as always i want to thank you guys for watching and i want to send a special thanks to my patreon supporters you can see their names on the tiles back here and there's still room for more there's always room for more so if you want to get your name up there be sure to support me on patreon i've got a couple of new patreons that i i need to send a thanks out to but otherwise i want to thank you guys very much for watching remember safety first See you next time.